Hey everybody, and welcome to another Jasp tutorial. Oh boy, it's been a while since uh, one of these videos has gone live on my channel. But you know, with a crazy year that was uh, my uh, last year, I I just I didn't have the time. And during winter break and spring break, I had other things that I had to do, and I couldn't record any videos. I was so sad. I was so sad. But there hasn't been very many changes to Jasp in the last little while since about January or so when nine zero point nineteen point three came out. Oh boy, this is my last set of uh, videos with uh, an Intel Mac. But in any case. I thought for uh, some of the videos that are coming out this summer over the next several weeks that we'd revisit Jasp and Jamovi uh, in obviously their own separate videos and doing some minor differences for various kinds of smaller, less frequently used analyses. Okay, so uh, in this video, what we're going to do is the Spearman's Row calculation. And as, as far as the tutorial goes, it's going to be more about analysis in this video rather than, you know, clicking buttons and, and making sure you have the right idea. I mean, it's very similar to how to perform a correlation in JASP, a regular Pearson's R correlation. But in this video and then the one to follow, we are going to do some of the more of uh, uh, less frequently used ones. So in this video, like I said, Spearman's row, that's Spearman. Yep. And Spearman's row is a correlation between two variables measured at the ordinal level, ordinal level. So we are going to be using data at the ordinal level. And to assist me with this tutorial and analysis explanation that you've come to find in my videos, not only do I show you how to do it, but we also go over the output. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video. And to help me is this data right here. Uh, and you know what? Let me make it bigger because we can make it bigger. So we are using James McDougall's Mastering Statistics with JASP and it's in its second edition. And James has so kindly sent me this book, uh, because I'm one of the, you know, I'm, I'm a person who is known on the internet, according to these videos, right? Known on the internet to be using JASP. And this is a, it's a statistic book that has JASP integrated into it. Very similar to uh, the Learning Statistics with Jamovi book that came out um, uh, several years ago when Jamovi first uh, joined the 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 market. And so with JASP as a similar thing, James McDougall wrote this book. And I believe he self-publishes it, but I, I could be wrong on that one. Uh, I mean, copyright James McDougall, PhD. So, um, you know, there you go. And, uh, you know, he he did it in concert with uh, the folks at JASP, right? So kudos to James for this book and for the data. So what we are going to be using is this data right here before I uh, put the data in. Well, you know, I could probably just put uh, the data into um, probably just put the data into JASP like this. And if I were going to upload it, I'd have to delete this line, this line 19. But I wanted to give um, James McDougall his his uh, citation here. All right. So let's go ahead and add in uh, this new data. You know what? We'll, we'll just click on new data because maybe you haven't seen me put in this new data before, right? One thing to note as I put in this new data, column one, we're going to double click on this and we're going to call this winery. And it's going to be an ordinal variable. Well, it's, it's technically a uh, it's technically a nominal variable, but it really doesn't matter. So you know what? I'll go ahead and put it in nominal. Anyway. And then we are going to name this um, A through J is what it is. B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Oops. J, H, I, J. So 10 wineries. And we're going to add two columns, as you can see here. One for uh, rankings of uh, Cabernet Sauvignon from each winery in 2010. And then six years later for each Cabernet Sauvignon, California wineries, by the way. So these are Cabernet Sauvignon. I'm saying that on uh, weirdly on purpose. Uh, so six year difference between these two. So we are going to add in another variable and we're going to call this one 2010. OK, and I don't know. I guess I have to hit enter. There we go. And we're going to call this ordinal. And the reason why we're doing an ordinal variable here is because we don't really know the distance between these rating values. And here's a really good point for you, uh, uh, watcher, audience member, viewer, uh, is that Spearman's row is really the correlation statistic you should be using on your Likert scales, right? Your, your one through five scales, and you're just trying to correlate between, because there is the theoretical debate about Likert scales being uh, ordinal, but used as interval scale variables. And that is a debate that has not been settled because far more people use uh, far more people use Likert scales as intervals than than setting up as ordinals. But this is how you should actually set them up. Uh, I think it's a really important idea. Okay, so let's go ahead and put in our data. Uh, and what I can do is I can copy paste. Where's my cell? There it is. I can copy paste these. So just a little copy, and then we'll do a little we'll do a little paste. There we go. And then we need to add one more. And this is for 2016 rating. Enter. And then we're gonna call this ordinal again. And then we're gonna go back here. And we are going to copy these. Oh, here. All right. Very good. 
So we can go ahead and close this window by hitting this X. And there we go. We have our data. And we can go back to analyses now to pull up our analysis. Okay. So what we do is we go into regression and we're going to, again, use the classical tests. I think they rename these from classic, from frequent to classical. I might be wrong. I might be, this might be a Mandela effect going on right now. Uh, so classical, and we're going to go into correlation just like we would if we wanted to do a point by serial. And just so you know, I am using the, um, I have the R module paired. Uh, I have the R module here. Okay. So it's showing me all the R code. Remember, if you want to take this from the this R module here, you do have to install the JASP package. Otherwise, none of this would really work. Although, interestingly, it is saying my version is 0 0.19.2. Interesting. Huh. But we don't want to use Pearson's R. That's selected by default. We're going to uncheck that. We're going to use row. Okay. And you can see up here that Pearson is false and Spearman equals true. And we're going to grab 2010 and 2016. And we're going to throw them in. Oops. I thought I had them both selected. My bad. There we go. And we see here. So after I fixed a transcribing error, LOL, um, I got the same results as um, James McDougall in the book. Okay. So let's go through. And, you know, honestly, we can uh, flag significant correlations. Once we do, we get the little double stars right there. Double asterisks, which tells us that it's significant at the 0 0.01 level. Uh, we can grab Fisher C, sample size, you know, all this stuff. We can do uh, assumption checks, right? Pairwise normality, you know, all of that jazz. Really, multivariate normality doesn't work, right? So maybe we don't do those. And then we can exclude pairs, et cetera. We don't really need to do all of that. What we what we want is just this outcome here. And let me go ahead and check Pearson's R for you and show you that the they are the exact same value. And that is part of the reason why some statisticians, well, a lot of statisticians and, and psychologists in general argue, well, let's just use Pearson's R for, for these. But here's the big problem. This is only Pearson's R for a linear relationship. And let me go, let me go ahead and show you what happens if we draw this plot. That's the correlation plot. Okay. If we take off Pearson's R. Now, this may seem to be linear and Pearson's R would work real well. But if it's not a linear relationship, if we simplified this and you can see this in the text, that that row would actually. So you can see here that Pearson's R is exactly the same as Spearman's row. But here's the difference and why there is still, again, debate, right? I can use it or I can't use it. I shouldn't use it. I should use it. I shouldn't use it, right? Theoretically, non-theoretically, in practice, theoretically, blah, 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 right? That, that debate. Uh, it's approximately, inter uh, the Likert scales are approximately interval, yada, 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 right? So the, the idea here is that because these two are identical, well, maybe it's a linear relationship. That might not be true. And so the idea here is that perhaps if we had more data, then we'd end up with a non-linear relationship between our ratings. And in this case, Spearman's row would be able to define the relationship better. Like, let's say it's a curvilinear relationship. Okay. Spearman's row will be better than Pearson's R. But before we end this video, it's important to note that people use Pearson's R because it's connection with uh, multiple regression. They use Pearson's R to make hypothesis decisions. Spearman's row is purely for descriptive purposes. You cannot square P Spearman's row to get the amount of shared variance. And row is not related to multiple regression. There's no connection there like there is for R. So that's important to note about these two. And while they might be the same, and of course they have different p-values because they have different distributions from where the p-value is being drawn, Spearman's row cannot be used for hypothesis testing. And that's how you do Spearman's row in JASP. If you have any questions, comments, or other feedback, please leave those in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.